and gentlemen, please welcome Walmart Store's business segment leaders, representing global e-commerce, Mark Laurie. For Walmart International, Dave Cheesewright. For Sam's Club, John Ferner. And representing Walmart US, Greg Foran. I'm here with 14,000 of my Walmart US associate friends. How's it going today? We're going to have a good time. Over to you, Dave. Good morning, Walmart. Hey. Now, I am absolutely delighted to introduce you to over 2,000 associates from 27 countries around the world who serve over 110 million customers a week. So say hello, Walmart International. to introduce the newest member to our team. He's made a massive difference to our business already. It's Mark Laurie, who leads our e-commerce business. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, thank you, Dave. That's gonna be tough to beat you guys. We're, uh, we're a small but fierce group here. Let, let him hear it. Oh, over to you, John. All right, thank you, Mark. And Mark, thank you for saving the best for last. I'm here with Team Sam's Club. So we're excited. And we're excited to be here this morning, and we're excited to get the party started and to kick the meeting off from the Sam's Club home office singing our national anthem is Nicole Faber.
been reading books of old, the legends and the myths, Achilles and his gold, Achilles and his gifts, Spider-Man's control, and Batman with his fists. And clearly I don't see my name up on that list. She said, where'd you wanna go? How much you wanna risk? I'm not looking for somebody with some superhuman gifts, some superhero.
Good morning, Walmart. It's my honor as your chairman to formally open our 47th annual shareholders meeting. Thank you, Blake, for that, that kind introduction. And I really do mean that. That was much better than that guy last year, James Corden. <laughs> At our shareholders meeting, we conduct our share of business. But most of all, we like to have fun. That's how Sam Walton wanted it to be. <laughs> Sam started doing shareholder meetings like this many years ago to drum up interest in our company. He wanted to show people why we're different and to celebrate with associates from our stores. This is a picture of Sam and Helen canoeing not on one of the many family canoe trips, but as part of the shareholder meeting in 1981. Sam succeeded beyond imagination with Walmart. And if he were here today, he would be the first to credit our associates with that success. He would simply want to say thank you. So to all who have been a part of this amazing story, especially our 2.3 million associates in 28 countries around the world, thank you. Thank you for making a difference every day. At Walmart, we have a lot to celebrate right now. There's, there's no question about that. Our company is moving in the right direction. We've demonstrated this with 11 consecutive quarters of positive comp sales growth in Walmart US. And we've also had strong performance at Sam's International and especially and especially in e-commerce. In fact, last quarter last quarter we grew our e-commerce business by over 60%. As encouraging as our results have been, there's nothing we love more than hearing good things from our customers. Recently, I was copied on a great customer email about the progress we're making online, and I thought I'd share it with you today. The subject is now shopping on walmart.com. I'm so glad you nudged me to switch to walmart.com. In the past, I would tried walmart.com, but always went back to that other website because it just seemed easier. Walmart.com is now so great. It works easily every time, and it has all the items I need. The packages arriving at our door this week have all been from Walmart.com. It has improved so much. <laughs> Feedback like that is so encouraging, especially when it comes from someone who I know for a fact is a tough customer. You see, that email was sent to my wife, Carrie, and it was sent by my mom. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of my mom shopping on that other website before, but I do appreciate her honesty and her enthusiasm. If mom says it's true, you know it is. At Walmart, we have every reason to be encouraged right now, but that doesn't mean we can get comfortable be satisfied or slow down. That's not an option for us, and it's really not an option for any retailer in this environment. Here's a recent headline that says it all. The retail apocalypse. And look at that chart. More than 3,500 store closures just in the early part of 2017. Walmart is well positioned for the tectonic changes happening in retail. We invested $2.7 billion to raise wages and improve our training programs. We purchased Jet.com. Which was our largest e-commerce acquisition ever. And we've expanded our online marketplace by millions of items to 50 million in the past year alone. Those are big changes and they're paying off for us. We've also made lots of smaller changes, many of them in the stores, that have improved the customer experience. But it's still not enough. 
We have to stay aggressive. We have to be nimble, move fast, and take risks, sometimes big risks. And our ears should perk up when we hear voices that say what we're trying to achieve can't be done. Throughout our history, we've proven the skeptics wrong, whether it was bringing discount retailing to small towns, developing state-of-the-art systems and logistics to lower our costs, or offering food and general merchandise under one roof in our super centers. This is who we are, and it made us great, and it will drive our success in the future. Sam called it swimming upstream, the 10th out of his 10 rules for building a successful business. And it's the rule that resonates the most with me. I recently came across a video where he talked about it, and I want to play it for you now. I believe that within our corporation, we can have entrepreneurs that are, sh that are shaking us and uh, rocking us around and challenging us and, 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 and telling us when we're wrong. You, some people call them mavericks. I would encourage you to look for those kind of folks in your stores. They're, they're sometimes trouble to you. They're sometimes trouble to our merchandising department. Sometimes they tell David Glass or Jack Shoemaker some things they don't want to hear, but bless their hearts, we need them. If this company is going to do good the next 10 years out, the next 20 years out, we're going to need those movers and shakers, those, uh, those mavericks out there that are coming up with changing ideas and suggestions and innovation. What a great message, and I think Sam's words ring as true today as they did then, because now more than ever, we need to swim upstream, and we need some of those mavericks. Is this the easy path or the comfortable path? No, it's gonna be harder and it's more strenuous, but it'll make us stronger, leaner, and better positioned to do the big things to once again deliver the future of retail. Now, swimming upstream doesn't just apply to our associates and leaders, it also applies to our board. We've made significant changes over the past couple of years to the board's structure and governance. We've deepened our expertise in technology, we've optimized the number of seats, and we've made several process improvements to be nimbler. We also continue to have strong, independent voices, and seven out of our 11 nominees are independent. Let me take a few moments to introduce our directors. I'll first recognize nine directors in addition to myself who are up for re-election. I'd like to ask them to stand as I call their names and to keep standing, and please hold your applause until the end. Our lead independent director and chairman, Jim Cash. <laughs> chairman of the Nominating and Governance Committee, thank you. The chair of our audit committee, retired KPMG chairman, Tim Flynn. Former American Airlines Chairman and CEO, Tom Horton. Yahoo President and CEO, Marissa Mayer. Walmart President and CEO, Doug McMillan. The Chair of our Strategic Planning and Finance Committee, former PepsiCo Chairman and CEO, Steve Reineman, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. The chair of our Technology E-Commerce Committee, Instagram CEO and co-founder Kevin Sistrom. Game Composites CEO Stuart Walton. And of course, my predecessor as chairman of the board of directors, Rob Walton. Thank you all for your willingness to continue to serve. Now, I'm very excited to introduce one new independent member who has been nominated to join the board, Carla Harris. Carla, please stand up. Thank you. <laughs> Carla is the vice chairman at Morgan Stanley. She's actively involved in her community and has been a strong advocate for women in business. In <laughs> In 2013, she was appointed by President Obama to chair the National Women's Business Council. Woo! 
and the board will benefit from her deep financial expertise and role as a champion for women. Carla, the board and I look forward to working with you. Stepping off the board and not standing for re-election are two directors who have made significant contributions to our company. They've both been strong advocates for the work we've done at Walmart with women's economic empowerment and diversity and inclusion programs. First, Pam Craig is the former CFO of Accenture and had an outstanding 34-year career with the firm. She's brought a global perspective in finance and technology expertise to our board. Pam's leaving us a little earlier than we would like, but we've enjoyed working with her and have benefited tremendously from her time with us. Thank you, Pam, for your service. <laughs> Linda Wolf is the retired chairman and CEO of Leo Burnett, a global advertising agency. Linda's brand management and range of perspectives have benefited the company tremendously during her 12 years on the board. She's been deeply involved in reshaping our associate training programs and compensation structures as chair of the compensation committee. And Linda has also worked closely with our lead independent director and myself and others on many of the changes to the board over the last couple years. Linda, you should be proud of the difference you've made for our company, and you've become a dear friend to all of us. We're going to miss you. Thank you. Our business is moving in the right direction. The changes we've made over the past couple years, big and small, are starting to pay off. But we still have a long way to go. So this is no time to be timid, to slow down, or to listen to any voices of doubt. We stay aggressive, work nimbly, move fast, take risks, and we swim upstream. Your board of directors has tremendous confidence in you, our associates, and in our leaders. And just as important, we're proud of you. So is our Walton family. We thank you for everything you do. Now let's set out to do what we've done before, and I believe on our way to doing yet again, delivering the future of retail. Have a great meeting. You know, I, I have this silly dream that one year I'm gonna come up here and there's nothing strange going on when I come out here, that it's just normal. I can like do my speech and we can just move on. Maybe next year from the ceiling, I, I don't know. I hate to, I don't give Hennebugger any ideas. How cool is this week? It is so much fun to have you here and it's so much fun to have you here to celebrate our company. We have built together an incredible business and it's a business that's positioned to win today and a business that's positioned to win in the future. Now, as he said, I'm the finance guy, so we're going to get to some numbers in a minute. But before we do that, I want to tell you just a quick story. So when I was a kid, I loved to play sports. Yeah, that's, that's me, number 24, striking fear in the hearts of opponents. I was, and I still am, really competitive. And when I was in eighth grade, I remember asking my dad whether I should focus more on grades or whether I should focus more on sports. Don't laugh, I was okay at sports. <laughs> and he gave me that dad look, you know that look? And he said, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll do both. Now, my dad knew the, the value of being balanced and how important that was to being successful. He probably also figured the NBA wasn't calling on number 24 anytime soon. <laughs> but that story and the importance about both is what came to mind as I was just thinking about this morning what to say and what to talk to you about this morning. Less than a year ago, we talked to our investors about a new financial framework, and it consists of three key elements of how we measure our success. Strong, efficient growth, operating discipline, strategic capital allocation. But if you think about it, it really comes down to just two main things that we need to do as a company to be successful. Grow comp sales in our existing stores, in your stores, and in e-commerce, I saw that group in the back, and we need to spend our money more wisely. So it's about doing both every day. 
So David Glass is here this morning. I had a chance to see Mr. Glass earlier today. <clears throat> Mr. Glass is our CEO after Sam Walton, for some of you who are newer to the company. And he once said, there are two ways to increase profit, cut expenses and increase sales. Pretty simple, but I like that next part. But we must do both well to succeed. So let's talk about how we're doing. In growing sales, this company, your company, is unbelievable. Last year, sales were up over $13 billion in constant currency with total revenue of $486 billion. And all of you played a part in that. It's unbelievable. Is anyone here from Walmart US? I thought I, thought I heard you earlier. Walmart U.S. has reported 11 straight quarters of positive comp sales and 10 straight quarters of comp traffic in our stores. Great results. So get ready. How about Sam's Club? I get an extra minute every year for that. Well, I have to go on now at some point, but you guys are awesome. Sam's Club has had positive comps for five straight quarters. And when we think about technology, you guys are leading the way in using technology to take care of our members. Thank you. I think I heard some folks from Walmart International. markets posted positive comp sales last year, and seven of those markets grew comp sales by more than 4%. That's what we like international. Thank you. So I think Mark Laurie called them this small but fierce group in the back. How about U.S. e-commerce? Wow. That may be a small group, but this has been a huge year. Last year, USC, or last quarter, U.S. e-commerce reported 63% sales growth. Unbelievable. That's a great job. So as we've grown sales, we've made important investments. We've made investments in people, in you, in technology, and in other key areas of the business. And it was the right thing to do. But as we've grown over the years, we haven't been as disciplined as we should have been and managing our expenses. And to get better, we always have to be honest with ourselves, right? So we usually like seeing charts go up and to the right, but not this one, not expenses. And I know that we can grow sales and we can be better with how, our sp how we spend our money, and I know it because we're starting to see results. We're starting to see expenses growing slower than sales in many parts of our business. And as you can see, we plan to do better going forward. But to continue on this journey is gonna require new technology. Greg said it, new processes. And most of all, a committed team of associates like you. A few weeks ago, I had the chance to see one of these great teams in action. I visited store 4601 in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Got a few from New Mexico here. Last year, sales in that store were up about 5%, over $100 million in sales and profit was up even more than sales, and at the same time, inventory was down. Unbelievable results. Let's take a look. Store 4601 is unique because of their commitment to excellence and their pride in everything that they do. What store manager David does that's different from other stores is his commitment to people, processes, and routines on a daily basis. We have a responsibility to our customers to be everyday low price champions. John's a great department manager. He loves our private label and he gets after it very aggressively, which our customers love. 
At my store, I prefer to choose the great value products because it offers more value to the company and has better value for the customers. I manage my expenses by using the MC40 to lower our inventory and also to drive our sales using the VPI program. I'm a very competitive person. I've won the VPI contest in Market 387 five straight months. One of the items that I decided to highlight was the Ooch Cheese Balls. Last year for the month of April, I sold 33. This year, I sold over 800. And they're gluten-free. The store does a phenomenal job of delivering on sales and profit because of its people. We have, we have John with us here this morning. John was put... I got to spend some time with John. That is a guy who knows his business, he knows his numbers, he knows his customers, and I just about didn't get out of the store without cheese balls. He was pushing those hard. John, you are awesome. You're what we need as an associate. Thank you. So, guess what would happen if we did what John and David and Carolyn and the team are doing everywhere around the world? We would run a better business with better customer service, bigger bonuses for associates, and happier shareholders. So, I usually like straight lines. I like this squiggly line. You have any idea what that is? Yep, that's our stock price since the beginning of last year. We've gone from a little over $60 a share to almost $80 yesterday. It's all you. Our customers and our investors are starting to see that we can do both. I'd like to, like, like to see that line keep going up. How about you? So how do we keep doing both? It's what you do every day. We're gonna grow sales, we're gonna be item merchants, we're gonna know our numbers like John does, we're gonna be in stock, we're gonna delight customers. And when it comes to expenses, we can make a difference. I know we can by finding ways to do more with less, to eliminate waste, to be more careful with, with supplies, and every dollar counts. If we were able to be 1% better in expenses, just 1%, that would be over a billion dollars every year for the company. We can pass those savings on to customers. We can invest in technology, invest in e-commerce, and we can invest in you. So each one of these dollars that you get in your stores, dollars, pesos, rand, AIs, yen, yuan, rupees, every one of these that a customer gives us in sales is earned every day. They trust us, but more than ever, they have choices. So we need to be disciplined about how we spend the money that they give us. So can you help us do both? Can you help us grow sales and be better in how we spend our money? I'm gonna ask you to say it with me. Let's make a commitment, how about that? Can you say it with me? We will do both. I was almost convinced. Let's go one more time. We will do both. You're awesome. Okay. So Walmart is one of the strongest companies to ever exist on this planet. We have all the resources we could ask for. And now it's up to us. It's up to us to continue the success now and in the future. For me, and I bet you feel the same, there aren't many things in life that are more fun than winning. It feels good, doesn't it? And if we can do both, if we can grow sales and spend our money wisely, we will win. Let's go do it. Thank you. Good morning, Walmart. I'm Melody Metz from Littleton, Colorado, and I was recently inspired. I was recently inspired to get out of my comfort zone and apply for a new job at the company. 
and I'm happy to say that it paid off. I am now the co-manager at Supercenter 5049, and I'm excited to continue my career with Walmart. So please help me welcome two of our leaders, Executive Vice President, Global People Division, Jackie Canney, and President and CEO of Walmart US, Greg Foran. Good morning, how's everyone going? I want to say a very special hello to Walmart US and tell you I'm just so proud of you. Is everyone having a great time? You know, Jackie, technology is driving enormous change in retail and the competition is really fierce. But you know, we have an advantage that no one else has. And that's all of you, our amazing associates. When we create opportunity and empower you to succeed, we delight our customers. And you know, when we do that, nothing can stop us. That is right, Greg. And you know, it all starts with three things. First, it starts with hiring the best. Just look around this room. You are the best. Second, we provide training and experiences so you all can be your best. And third, when it comes to career paths, no one has more than us. Walmart is the best. Let's look at some ways we are going to bring this to life and introduce you to some of your fellow associates that are doing great things. And let's start with tra training, Jackie. You know, academies, they are our dedicated training facilities. And they combine classroom learning with hands-on shop floor experience. And you use things like virtual reality, we are able to create an immersive training learning experience that allows us to participate in all kinds of scenarios. So let's take a look. When I first heard that Walmart would be using VR training in the academies, I thought it was awesome. It was really impressive, just at the level of investment that they were willing to put in the actual training piece of our associates. You see everything that the customer sees. It makes you just actually feel like you're in the situation at that time, so you get that personal one-on-one -on -one training. We would teach them how to cull and what to look for in the wet wall and how to crisp and produce. We used it on the front end. How do we capture shrink? How do we serve customers? For the Black Friday event, for example, we know what to look at, what other stores are seeing, how they're interacting with the customers. As technology advances, we advance the way we train our people. Uh, and that, that investment, I think, you'll always see a return on. So far, we've rolled out more than 100 academies here in the U.S. And we're going to get to 200 before the year is out. And that means we will have trained more than 225,000 associates. It's an astounding number. You know, academies aren't just training you for the opportunities of today. They're setting you up to succeed tomorrow. And Greg, tomorrow is already here. Just think, two years ago, we didn't have personal shoppers, and now we have nearly 14,000. <laughs> and two years ago, we didn't have self-checkouts, and now we have self-checkout hosts, and now we have roughly 13,000. And we are going to continue to create jobs like these, and we are going to continue to provide you with the training and opportunities to build your career, because it is truly all of you who keep us competitive in this very fast-moving world. You know, one of the people building a great career here at Walmart is Robin, Robin Immel. 
She's a director of retail technology in Reston, Virginia. And you know, and you know, Greg, Robin's story is amazing. It shows what happens when you encourage a young person's interest in technology, and certainly that of a young woman in a field where we need more women. When I was in sixth grade, that Christmas, my dad got me a computer. And he said, don't waste my money. I spent the rest of the winter and all of the spring learning how to program that computer with nothing but a three-inch manual that came with it. At the end of uh, the spring, as a reward for not wasting his money, my dad signed me up for computer camp. When we arrived to camp, we went to register, and it was clear that something was off. I figured it was just because I was a black girl, and they get over it. But then someone said, oh, you're a girl. And it was clear they didn't have any arrangements for me, nowhere to shower, nowhere to sleep. You know, they offered my dad a refund. And my dad said, no, you don't, you don't get it. You don't understand. My little girl's going to learn how to program a computer this summer. So my dad turned to me and he said, they obviously weren't expecting you. You're going to show them what you can do. You're going to show them what you're made of. You're going to show them who you are. It was, it was that day that I began to understand that I had to learn to chase my dreams, to explore what I wanted to explore by my terms. My dad was my first champion. He was the first person that helped me to understand that the world was bigger than what I saw and I had the ability to be a part of it. My first day at Walmart, my supervisor told me, if you want to solve big problems, this is the biggest stage. If you can dream it, you can build it. If you have an idea, you can pursue it. No one's going to tell you no. And I found that to be absolutely true. The opportunity here is amazing. I'm thankful to my dad, who helped me begin my journey. And I'm thankful for Walmart for taking it to another level. Jackie, I just love that story. It is so inspirational. And you know, Robin is here with us this morning. So Robin, can you please stand? We appreciate you, Robin. We need leaders in technology, and we need more women like Robin. You know, Jackie, as we said in the beginning, our goal at Walmart and Sam's Club is to delight our customers. And the best way to do that is by empowering our associates. Penny Peng is a great example of what I'm talking about. She's a buyer for private brands at Sam's Club China, and she has... She has what my friend Steve Bratsby's would call the merchant mentality. You know, Penny's love of Walmart and her passion for unique items started when she was just a young girl in China. Her journey eventually led her to the International Academy here in Bentonville. Let's take a look. When I was trying to find a job, I found this International Academy program, and that's perfect for me. The main goal is to bring in the top talent out of U.S. universities. At the conclusion of the program, they'll bring both a U.S. Sam's Club retail perspective and an international perspective from their home countries. What I do here is different from what I, what I did in uh, Bentonville, because here I'm working on the private brand team and I'm responsible for developing our own uh, member smart items. So I have to vision myself as a member to help me understand the items that I can bring to the club. I went to the first Sam's Club in China when I was 12. I found this really 
um, awesome uh, mashed potato powders. The whole reason why I started this program is because of this mashed potatoes. I'm really grateful for this International Academy program. You know, Penny found her passion and she pursued it. Now she's back in her country and she's finding great items that delight our customers. Our job is to continue to empower her and give her even greater opportunity. And you know, Robin and Penny are like so many of you. You are committed to your work and you are passionate about our customers. And when you take that passion and commitment and you combine it with empowerment and opportunity, something special happens. We win together, we delight customers, and we help them save money so they can live better. We're fortunate to have you, and more importantly, our customers are fortunate to have you, because they deserve the best, and you are the very best. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Emil Brown, a process controller at Macro in Cape Town, South Africa. And I'm so happy to be here in Arkansas where it all started. And it's so exciting to be here with so many associates from across the world, just like me. My name is Mariani Moraes and I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I'm a commercial junior analyst. We are pleased to introduce our next speaker. Executive Vice President of Global Governance and Corporate Secretary, Jeff Gerhard. Thank you, Emil and Marianne, and good morning, everybody. So Emil and Marianne are two of our 13 Integrity in Action Award winners. You saw them on stage earlier during the opening ceremony carrying the flags and representing their countries. Um, let's just take a minute to recognize all of our Integrity in Action Award winners and their inspiring acts of integrity. There they are, right there. Thank you all. Congratulations. So now, it's time to get down to the official business of the meeting. The inspectors of election today are from Broadridge Financial Solutions, Inc. Based on their report, we have a quorum and may proceed with the business portion of the meeting. The polls are now open, and they will remain open until approximately 10.50 a.m. Only shareholders who held their shares before close of business on April 7, 2017, or their proxy holders are entitled to vote shares. If you have not voted or wish to change your vote, raise your hand and the ushers will pass you a ballot. There are eight matters to be brought before the meeting today. Each will be taken up in the order in which they appear in the agenda. Only these eight items, if properly presented, will be considered and voted on today. As a reminder, no one may address the meeting unless recognized by our chairman, Greg Penner, or by me as corporate secretary. The first item of business is the election of 11 directors. Greg introduced them all to you this morning, and additional information regarding our directors and director nominees is contained in our proxy statement. The second company proposal is an advisory vote to determine how often we conduct advisory say on pay votes. Our shareholders last voted on the frequency of say on pay votes in 2011 and has been an annual agenda item for our shareholder meetings ever since. The board continues to believe that holding an annual advisory vote on say on pay is the most appropriate option for our company and for our shareholders. The vote on this proposal is advisory, which means that the voting results will not be binding. The third company proposal is an advisory vote to approve the compensation of Walmart's named executive officers. 
Our executive compensation program is designed with an emphasis on performance and is intended to closely align the interest of our senior executives with the interest of our shareholders. The vote on this proposal is also advisory. However, our board and our compensation and management development committee will consider the results in its regular evaluations of our executive compensation program. The fourth company proposal relates to the ratification of the appointment of Ernst & Young, LLP, as the company's independent accountants. Ernst & Young has held this position since 1970. So now we'll move on to the remaining items. First, the three shareholder proposals that appeared in the company's proxy materials. The company's responses to each of these shareholder proposals are detailed in our proxy statement. Now, out of respect for everyone in attendance, we ask that each presenter please stick to your three minutes of allotted time and refrain from speaking on topics unrelated to your proposal. The first shareholder proposal requests that Walmart adopt a policy that the chairman be independent. Amy Ritter, representing the International Brotherhood of Teamsters General Fund, will present this proposal. Ms. Ritter? Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Amy Ritter, and I am with Making Change at Walmart. And I urge you to support proposal number five, which asks the board to appoint a chairman who is completely independent of the company. Walmart needs an independent chairman to make sure it has the best possible oversight and that the board acts in the best interests of all shareholders and American workers and not just the privileged few. Walmart has 1.5 million employees in the United States and a total of 2.3 million in the entire world. These are amazing, hardworking women and men and they are the main reason Walmart makes billions of dollars in profit every year. They are the reason that top executives get millions of dollars in salary and stock, and why the Walton family today is worth more than $130 billion. Make no mistake, these hardworking workers have earned and deserve a better life. So why should they have to work nearly 1,000 years to earn what CEO Doug McMillan makes in just one, some $22.5 million. Walmart talks about its average hourly wage for full-time U.S. workers being $13.75 an hour. But how many of your 1.5 million workers in the U.S. actually make that? Can you please tell us because no one seems to answer that simple question. From the countless Walmart workers who have called us, emailed us, and reached out to us, we now know that they don't make your average wage. So the question the Walmart board and management should answer to is this, how can any Walmart worker build a better life when they've been with your company for five years or more and still only make nine or $10 an hour? Could any of your leadership here survive on $9 an hour? Why are tens of thousands of Walmart workers forced to apply for food stamps or other government assistance paid by taxpayers when Walmart could easily afford to pay a real living wage. Every day we hear the stories of Walmart workers brave enough to speak out. We hear about women and men fired unfairly, the pay they have yet to receive, the raises they are denied, and some of the struggles that they endure. They're told to be afraid of us of the UFCW union, even though all we've done is advocate for higher wages, improved benefits, and a better life for all Walmart workers. So today I'm here to ask you, your executive leadership and board, one simple thing. Will you sit down with us to discuss these shareholder right. resolutions all right, and the on. changes that you could make today Let's that would change respect. the lives Let's of your employees Sorry, forever? Ms. Sorry, Mr. Ritter. Let's be respectful and let her finish. So we hope that you will seize this opportunity to meet with us and make real change for your workers. We encourage every Walmart employee, no matter where you're from, your race, gender, ethnicity, or whom you love, to stand up and speak out. We can start this process by supporting proposal number five, which will make the Walmart board more independent and more accountable. So I wanna thank all of you. God bless you all and all of Walmart's workers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ritter.
The second shareholder proposal requests that the board provide proxy access for shareholder nominees for election to the board. No one is here today to present this proposal, so we're going to move on to our third shareholder proposal. This proposal requests that management nominate at least one candidate for the election to the board who is an independent director with environmental expertise. Carolyn Davis, representing Organization United for Respect, will present this proposal. Good morning, Ms. Davis. Good morning. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the Organization United for Respect, I am speaking in favor of resolution number seven, which reads as follows. Be it resolved, shareholders request that management nominate at least one candidate for election to the board at the next annual meeting of shareholders who has a high level of expertise and experience in environmental matters relevant to global supply chains, transportation or energy efficiency, and is widely recognized in the business and environmental communities as an authority in such field, as reasonably determined by the company's board or the compensation nominating and governance committee, and will qualify subject to exceptions in extraordinary circumstances clearly detailed by the board as an independent director under the definition Walmart uses to classify its directors, provided, however, that no director shall be considered independent if he or she has had a financial relationship with an, with an organization that has received in any year in the previous three years more than 100,000 from Walmart's majority shareholders, a member of the Walton family or the Walter, Walton Family Foundation. The nomination should be made in a manner that does not affect the unexpired term of any director. My name is Carolyn Davis from store 1300, and I am a Walmart associate from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, where I proudly serve our customers. Our CEO, Doug McMillan, has made it clear that retailers like Walmart will only survive if their business creates shared value that benefits shareholders and society. As part of this commitment, he made bold promises to become one of the most environmentally sustainable retailers and to invest in us, the associates. Climate change is directly threatening our communities, and despite everything we hear today, the facts remain. Walmart's greenhouse gas emissions that directly cause climate change are not decreasing, they are increasing. And Walmart's use of renewable energy that is going up is going down. And as far as investing in associates, the unfair leave policies, reduced hours and low pay make it difficult for most of us to pay our bills and to take care of our families. Walmart can and should live up to the promises it makes. Investing in associates means letting us take care of our children when they are sick and accepting our doctor notes. Investing in associates means that new parents at Walmart are allowed time to bond with our children. Walmart's female executives received 10 weeks of paid family leave. Let's do the same for our associates, women and men. Investing in associates means ending the open availability requirement and giving associates set schedules so we can plan our lives and be there for our families. And for our planet, And for our planet, it means having an independent environmental expert on the board to hold us accountable to our promises. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you, Ms. Davis. We appreciate your viewpoint and your service as an associate. Lastly, as noted under the other matters section of our proxy statement, Janie Grease, Grice will present a proposal concerning annual reporting of certain additional demographic information about our full and part-time associates in Walmart U.S. Thank you, Ms. Grice. Can I just stand here? I'm sure. Stand right there. 
Just stand right here. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution. Resolved. Shareholders request that Walmart Stores Incorporated report annually to shareholders on the percentages of full-time hourly associates at Walmart US, broken down by racial and ethnic groups, and the percentages of part-time hourly associates at Walmart US, similarly broken down by racial and ethnic groups during the previous fiscal year. In preparing this report, we believe that the company should use the racial and ethnic categories used in the company's culture, diversity, and inclusion report. My name is Janie Grice, and I'm a three-year associate from Marion, South Carolina. I work at a store 1829. I love working at Walmart and serving our customers. And my coworkers, all of you are my family. When I started working at Walmart, I made just over $7 an hour. Thanks to associates speaking out for fair pay, we received a raise. Today, I make over $10 an hour. I appreciate that Walmart took this important step, but too many of us are still part-time. Too many of us have schedules and hours that change so frequently, we can't plan our lives or line up a second job. Too many of us still can't pay our bills. The good news is, solutions are easily within our reach. At my store, for example, experienced associates like me are eager to work full-time hours, but instead of increasing our hours, management hires more part-time associates. Working full-time hours would help us deliver the quality service that our customers deserve. Because full-time work at Walmart often means a set schedule and better pay, it would also help bring economic stability to associates and our families. Sam Walton said, if you want the people in the stores to take care of the customers, you have to make sure you're taking care of the people in the stores. That's the most important single ingredient of Walmart's success. That's why I filed this resolution. I know that Walmart can do better. As you know, at Walmart today, the makeup of our management and executives doesn't reflect the diversity of our frontline workforce. Walmart did the right thing by releasing that data and committing to diversity and inclusion in how we recruit, hire, develop, and promote associates. Disclosing the makeup of full-time and part-time associates will help us stay true to that commitment. Recently, Walmart declared that we've entered a new era of trust and transparency. So, I'm asking our CEO, Doug McMillan, and the Walton clan to embrace fairness. Please, tell us the average wage for women versus men at Walmart. Tell us if women are concentrated in part-time jobs. And please adopt this proposal. Tell us if people of color are concentrated in part-time positions that typically pay less. If there's a problem, we can fix it together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grice. Thank you, Ms. Grice. And I also want to thank you for your service as an associate. And I want to thank each of our uh, shareholder proponents you know, today we have heard different perspectives uh, from our opponents, and at, at Walmart, we really think it's important to show respect to everyone, even if we don't necessarily agree with everything that's said. There are many of us here that are truly proud to be a part of the company and proud of the great things we've done. There are a couple of points I do want to provide some clarification on. First, with respect to our associates, the $2.7 billion investment that Greg mentioned earlier in training, education, and wages, that really happened. That's real. We're also investing, as you heard, in a technology to make our associates' jobs easier and to help them serve our customers better. Last year alone, 
150,000 part-time hourly associates were converted to full-time associates. And over 200,000 associates were promoted to positions of greater pay or responsibility. Now, women represented 57% of our hourly associates who were promoted. And people of color represented 45% of our hourly associates who were promoted. We're proud of the number of women and people of color in our stores and clubs and believe that we are an industry leader. Again, though, we appreciate your perspectives. We appreciate hearing from you and to all our shareholder proponents. Thank you uh, for being here today. I'm Sibuj Hawk, Coastal Manager, Online Grocery in Ottawa, Canada. It is, my great, it is my great pleasure to introduce the Chief Operating Officer of Sam's Club, Giselle Reyes, and President and CEO of Walmart International, David Cheeseright. Okay, so first of all, um, first of all, I'd just like to thank Sabuj uh, for the introduction. And actually, Sabuj is the very first online grocery assistant store manager in Canada. So let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you, Sabuj. Thank, thank you. Hey, uh, Giselle. Um, yes. I mean, you and I had the chance to work together, and I know yes, one of the things you've always been really passionate about is teamwork. Yes. And I figure that you and I work for the two noisiest divisions in Walmart. Yes, we do. So, so I thought we might start by demonstrating a bit of teamwork and asking those two divisions to raise the roof. So, Sam's Club and Walmart International. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea, though. No, I, I thought it was actually a great idea, especially since Sam's Club was going to win that contest. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, listen, in, in all seriousness, it's been a lot of fun over the last few years, the rivalry between Sam's and International. Okay. Right. Well, it was... You know what, it was, uh, it was great to have Sabuj introduce us earlier, and uh, we were chatting before, and he told me that he takes great pride in picking only the freshest produce and the best cuts of meat for his customers, just like he's shopping for his own family. Yeah, that's right. That's the power of Walmart, Dave. That's 2.3 million dedicated associates like Sabuj building customers' trust and making every day easier for busy families. Now, each week, we serve more than 260 million customers and members across 28 different countries. From stores and clubs, <laughs> from stores and clubs to websites and apps, we've always been committed to helping them save money. But today's world is complex and life can be hectic. So in addition to saving money, customers also want to save time. 
Parents especially need shopping to be simple, easy, and enjoyable. That's right, and by bringing together our fantastic e-commerce capabilities with our great stores, e-commerce, customers can shop in a lot of different ways. And that, Dave, is what makes Walmart unique. So, whether they want to visit their local store, shop from a mobile device at their kid's soccer game, or even get a healthy meal on the go, we have innovative solutions for every occasion. A great example of this is the expansion of online grocery to pick up in the US. Yeah. It's a huge time saver for anyone with a busy schedule, especially a mum with small kids. She can order online, choose the pickup time and location, and an associate will load everything into her car. And the best part, she never had to unbuckle a car seat. So let's meet Jackie, who just tried it for the first time. We're in the Walmart parking lot in Branson, where we just experienced um, a gift to me, really. I mean, truly, it's a gift from Walmart, specifically to me, I know this. Um, the Walmart on online grocery pickup just started in Branson. And um, happy camper, happy mama. All my stuff looks Happy good. customer, all of our stuff looks good. Yeah, the egg were broken, none of the bread uh -uh. was mashed. Nope, we checked it all. I ordered produce, the produce looked good. They gave us just a goodie bag. Goodie bag. Oh, and they had these numbers, one through eight. And you're at a number, so you don't get their orders mixed up. After you order, I'll tell you what number you go. Yep. And you just have to download the app, and they can track you to know where you're at. That's right. You're a smart cookie. You're a smart cookie. Okay, y'all enjoy. I hope everyone is um, as excited about this as we are. Um, game changer. Enjoy your summer. And um, this is not a paid endorsement in any way. This is just a happy mama. I love that video. Isn't that great? And there's more to the story. You see, Jackie's other daughter was in the very back of the car, and you couldn't quite see her. She has cerebral palsy and autism. So she's easily upset by sounds and crowds. And it's because of this that Jackie told us that she's extra thankful to be able to shop this way. You know what? The ability to make a difference in the lives of others is what makes Walmart so special. And that was a great example, Giselle. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And soon, busy moms will be able to get their items even faster with our free automated pickup. So you just drive up to the machine in the parking lot, you enter a code, and it appears, and get this, Dave, 60 seconds. <laughs> 60 seconds. After testing, it'll be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Imagine that and we'll be the only retailer in the world to have this set up. <laughs> and you know what? The great thing is we've hired dedicated associates to fill the unit. So it's another terrific example of how technology incorporated into the business can create jobs. Now, in International, we've been doing online grocery a long time. 19 years in the... 19 years in the UK and 16 years in Japan. In fact, eight of our 11 markets offer pickup and delivery options. And one of our most recent innovations is express delivery. Some customers in Mexico and Canada can now have fresh produce, even frozen items, brought right to their door in just one hour. In China, our delivery partner Dada has, get this, over three million drivers. Let's take a look.
Isn't that great? Did you see the clock in the corner? Store to door in less than an hour. You know what I also love about this, Giselle? By making shopping fast and easy, we're helping parents enjoy more quality time with their kids. Yeah, we are for sure. And with our new Walmart app, mobile devices are quickly becoming their control center for shopping. So they're using it to shop the more than 50 million SKUs on walmart.com. They also love it to check inventory in their stores or to locate items as they shop. And with our new pharmacy features, customers everywhere will soon be able to use our express lanes to save even more time in line. That's great, Giselle. But you know what? We're also innovating to make paying even easier. Walmart Pay is quick and simple. There's no need to have a handy wallet. Simply scan the QR code at a checkout and never have to worry about where to put the change or losing a receipt. Yeah. And there's one more app in a very special place that our members absolutely love at Sam's Club. <laughs> happens to be, it happens to be. Yes, you're right. It happens to be my favorite app, and that's Scan and Go. <laughs> our associates are excited about it, but also our members are really excited about it. Check out this feedback. They're absolutely delighted. And associates are always telling me about how it's transformed the shopping experience from an errand to something that our members actually love doing. And as a busy mom myself, I can completely appreciate that what we're working on together, it's not just about technology that makes life easier, Dave. You see, my challenge is always around dinner time and making sure that it's fast and healthy. And that's why I'm also a big fan of our take and bake meals. Now let's take a look at how we're helping Shannon, one of our business members, solve her biggest challenges. Shannon Allen, and I am the Grown Woman, the creator, enthusiast, and organizer of Grown. But today I'm talking to you about being the CEO of my family. Well, will you have all your questions down this weekend? Do you have anything left over? Yeah, I juggle a lot. I have five children, my husband travels for work, I'm always putting a delicious, healthy meal on the table every night, and I have this kind of amazing company. But the beautiful thing about Walmart is that if I pop in to get delicious, freshly prepared organic food, or if I want to get something personal for myself, like eyelashes or deodorant, or even my son Walker needs a refresh on his insulin, Walmart has it all. When I'm acting CEO of my family, I rely on Walmart to help me save money. But when I'm this acting CEO of Grown, I rely on Sam's Club. Digital shopping and picking up has completely changed my life. Shannon does a good amount of her shopping here in Sam's Club. I'm usually the one that helps her out, uh, going around the building to make sure we have everything she needs. The beautiful thing about my relationship with Sam's Club is that it makes me accessible to everyone. So I'm able to save money on just about everything I buy for Grown, which in turn helps my customers save money. We want to make sure that our business members are successful, and working with Shannon and the team at Grown, their success is our success. I'm so grateful for the relationship with Walmart and Sam's Club. They really believe in these strategic partnerships. They want me to be a success so they can be a success and they can give their customers a wow experience. I love how Shannon is so happy about this. It's kind of inspiring, right? See, we're meeting Shannon's needs as a mom and as a business member. So we're giving her entire family that wow experience. Without a doubt, Giselle, Walmart's had a rich legacy of delighting customers all over the world for more than 50 years. The wonderful thing is that what we've talked about today is just a fraction of what we're doing. And I'm so excited about how much more we can do for customers. But for all the new ways we find to serve customers, one thing remains consistent. And that's all of you. You get to touch lives. You get to make a difference. And together, we'll never stop trying to make every day easier for busy families. So, to all of our associates that are here today, I want you to remember this. Remember that every time you smile, every time you fill an order, 
or every time you help a customer find the item that they need, you are helping make life easier for their families too. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Good meeting so far? Yeah. Great. I want to take a couple minutes and just introduce some members of our Walton family who are here today. And uh, first of all, my oldest son, Kevin. Stand up, Kevin. Uh, Father-in-law, Rob Walton, and his wife, Melanie. Rob's son, Ben, his wife, Luciana, and their girls. Alice, who we'll get up here in just a minute. Got Jim, his wife, Lynn, and their son, Stuart. Also, their oldest daughter, Annie, and her husband, Joey. Annie's younger brother, Tom, and his wife, Olivia. And their youngest son, James, and his fiance, Dominique. And another member of our third generation, Lucas Walton. Uncle Frank Robson, great to have you here as always, and his son, Mark. And finally, Ann Cronkey and her daughter, Whitney. Thank you all for being here today. Our family is really as passionate as ever about this company, its leaders, and our incredible associates from around the world. And we know that the business Sam built continues to be in capable and caring hands. Now we've got a special video with Rob, Jim, and Alice about the origins and meaning of the Sam Walton Entrepreneur of the Year Award, which will be presented next. Our people make the difference. That is our edge at this point, isn't it? Isn't that the great edge that this company has? Our people make the difference. It wasn't just a phrase or a slogan. Dad believed it, and he lived it every single day. We still get together as a family at uh, shareholders. For me, uh, just a chance to reconnect, and, and then also to get to know and get to meet some of the associates that come in from all over, literally all over the world. It's just so important for all of us in, uh, in management to be looking for those great ideas that our associates have. Dad relished and lived for change. He loved change. He loved creativity. He loved for the associates to come up with new ideas and try new things. The investment in, a, in associates is just one of the greatest things that this company has ever done. You can feel the difference. I think we've got great leaders in place and I think that the emphasis on creativity and entrepreneurship is stronger than it's been for a long time. I think that the Entrepreneur of the Year Award kind of stems from that philosophy of searching for the great uh, leaders and, and creators in our company that are willing to, to try new things and, and take a risk. Well, our winner this year is, uh, reflects real entrepreneurial spirit in the context of this huge, huge company that we are all associated with. It's a team that's very tightly knit, broke down all the barriers, experimented, failed some, brought their project to uh, market in record time for such a big undertaking, uh, very special, and incorporated the advantages that we have with this uh, store network that we have into this digital world that we're all living in, and I think that's so important. Persistence in the face of adversity, and uh, Dad was a very persistent person. <laughs> I think he would be really proud of this year's winner. Today, we recognize another great Walmart associate and actually a great team with the Sam M. Walton Entrepreneur Award. Walmart Pay has helped create the kind of fast, e easy, seamless shopping experience that our customers want. Since its launch, more than 7.3 million Walmart Pay transactions have taken place. 
About 3,000 new customers try it every day, and 90% of them will use the service again. This recognition isn't just about what Walmart Pay has achieved, it's also about how it was created. It went from concept to launch in only 18 months, and it involved a 180-person team from across multiple departments. Walmart Pay stands out as a great innovation for our company and a great example of how our company can innovate. Accepting the Sam M. Walton Entrepreneur Award on behalf of the Walmart Customer Technology Team is Senior Vice President Daniel Eckert. Greg Benham, Produce Supervisor from Sam's Club 6605, Gilbert, Arizona. I'm excited to introduce the Chief Sustainable Officer and Foundation President, Kathleen McLaughlin, and President of Sam's Club, John Ferner. today here with John Fern... John? Oh. Hey, Kathleen. Hey. <laughs> Everyone, hey. morning. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so, Kathleen. So Kathleen, sorry to be a bit late. Yeah. I, was, I was back there in the green room with one of our performers, and, and I don't want to say who it is yet, but they've got an entire taco bar set up back there. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> I'm sure you love that. Yeah. So just the other day, I was asking John, if he had to eat just one food for the rest of his life, what would it be? And of course he said... Tacos, right? <laughs> That's right. It's my favorite food, and plus, you'd have so many options. You could have beef, you could have chicken, pork, or fish. Yep, that's right. We realized tacos would actually be the perfect thing to talk about today because everything we sell has a story. Where it came from, how it was made, who made it. A single taco illustrates so many of the ways that Walmart helps people and the planet. So we thought we'd talk to you today 
about what our company is at our very core. Yeah. We're merchants, right? We buy and we sell merchandise, mm -hmm. and product is the hero in everything we do. And that's especially true at Sam's Club. <laughs> Okay, so before I get too far into this, I just want to say that we're off to a great start this year. Thank you to the entire team and thank you so much for the first quarter. Way to go. Good job. And Kathleen, with so much of our merchandise, we have the ability to make opportunities come to life. Yeah. For example, these tasty tortillas, they come from a woman-owned supplier Olay Mexican Foods. And Veronica Moreno, she started the business with just one machine in Atlanta, Georgia. But, yeah. but she worked hard, and today her products are on thousands of shelves, and she employs hundreds of women. Yeah. Walmart and Sam's Club do a lot to support. We do a lot to support <laughs> small and women-owned businesses. Don't we, Kathy? <laughs> so we do a lot, right? <laughs> I think what John was trying to say is we do actually a lot to support small and women-owned businesses all around the world through our Women's Economic Empowerment Initiative. It's brought our customers and our members lots of really outstanding products. You'll hear more about that this morning. Talking about tortillas makes me think about what goes in them. So corn, wheat, and the work that we do with farmers all around the world to optimize fertilizer. Now that lowers costs, and it also lowers emissions. So work like that, along with things like reducing packaging, reducing food waste, reducing energy in factories, Creating innovative new products like LED light bulbs and cold water wash, Walmart and our suppliers have already taken out millions of metric tons of greenhouse gas from supply chains all around the world. And we just announced a new goal. Walmart and suppliers aim to take out in our supply chain by 2030 a gigaton of greenhouse gas emissions. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, Kathleen, I know everybody wants to know, how big is a gigaton? So, a gigaton is a billion, that is billion with a B, tons of emissions. So it's basically like taking 200 million cars off the road for an entire year. Wow, 200 million cars. Okay, so let's keep going. I think a lot of people like beef in their tacos, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, did you know that Walmart works with cattle farms in Brazil to help reduce deforestation? Yeah. And we're using a mapping tool that lets a supplier yeah. look at 75,000 different farms to understand the impact those farms have on the environment. And we're working with a group called the World Resources Institute to help globalize this technology. Okay, maybe you'd like to have carnitas in your taco, right? That's what I like, Yeah. carnitas. Well, in China, we're doing a traceability pilot with pork using blockchain technology. And what blockchain does is it allows someone to track a product from the farm all the way to the shelf and then have a record of it each and every step along the way. And that's a really important part, Kathleen, of the new food safety collaboration center we launched in China just last year. That's right, go China. So if you're talking about a fish taco or a shrimp taco, we've been working hard to address the social and environmental challenges in the seafood industry. So for example, the Walmart Foundation has supported the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership to address environmental risk and prevent disease with small-scale fish farms. We're also working on promoting worker dignity. So in another example, we've supported Golden Dreams 
which is coming up in a minute. Uh, it's a Burmese language app from the Itzra Institute. So seafood workers can use this app to read and provide reviews about potential employers, recruiters, service providers. And Kathleen, it's such important work because it's changing lives for people who work in the supply chain. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I have another question. Can you have a taco without salsa? Of course not. Right. So, for some of the people who farm the tomatoes, the cilantro, other produce that people like to have in their tacos, we've been working to really improve their lives. Take a look at this story about a farmer in Mexico who is supported... <laughs> who is supported by a program of the Fundación Walmart de Mexico. Todos los días, Leonardo canta a las cuatro y media. Y mi papá se levanta a trabajar. Siempre me tapa porque hace frío. que le gusta ver el sol cuando sale, que es la hora más bonita del día. Mi mamá nos prepara el desayuno y le lleva el suyo a mi papá. Juntos regan el campo, siembran o recogen la cosecha. Ellos saben hablar con la tierra. With Walmart's program, over 20,000 small growers now have access to markets, better income, training, and tools, bringing our customers quality produce and allowing the farmers, their families, and their communities to thrive and prosper. Emiliano, and he told us that program lifted him out of poverty and has helped him send his five children you saw in that video to school. Isn't that amazing? I'm so proud of this company, and I'm proud of the work we do. I'm proud of the work you do. And I'm proud of the work we do in stores, in clubs, and online each and every day, all around the world, because it truly makes a difference. With everything we do, we want to serve our customers in a way that builds a stronger business and a stronger society. And we hope that you can see that even with just one taco, we can help people, we can help the planet, and we can help our company all at the same time. Thank you so much. Thank Have you a great morning. for all you do.
is Victoria Vocal, and I'm one of the grocery buyers for Jet.com and Walmart.com in Hoboken, New Jersey. I am very, very proud to be helping to make customers' shopping experiences easier. And now, please help me welcome our Chief Operating Officer of Walmart US, Judith McKenna. Thank you, Victoria, and good morning, everybody. It's a real privilege to be with you all today and to represent all of our associates from the US. At Walmart, you know, we're finding different ways to serve customers by combining the passion of our people with the power of technology. And no one knows that better than our associates themselves. And the very best, best, best bit of my job is I get to see it firsthand with associates just like Rhonda Diggs, who's here with us today. Good Rhonda, morning. tell everybody where you're from. Willis, Texas. Willis, Texas. Rhonda is actually from our Academy store, which is Supercenter 3213 in Woodlands, Texas. She's a personnel coordinator doing an incredible job for us. How's your shareholders week? It has been fabulous. I've met so many people from everywhere. I'm honored to be here. Well, we're glad that you are. There is nothing quite like a shareholders week, is no, there? No, there isn't. Would you do us the honor of introducing our next speaker? I would love to. Please welcome our U.S. E-Commerce President and CEO, Mark Laurie. Is amazing. How y'all doing? You having fun? Me too. The energy in here is absolutely contagious. Just like that e-commerce growth, 63% last quarter. Thank you. Thank you all, especially to the e-commerce group. Great job, guys. So does everyone want to keep this growth going? Yeah. Me too. So let's continue empowering our customers to shop smarter so they can save money and time. We're doing that on Jet.com by showing customers how to build bigger, smarter baskets. And we're doing that on Walmart.com too. Take a look. When you go to Walmart.com, you can immediately see the items you most commonly buy even the ones you buy in store. That's my account. Hey, wait. Shampoo and conditioner. <laughs> that, that must be somebody else in my family. I haven't needed those in a long time. <laughs> uh, notice with just a couple taps, you can get free two-day shipping with no membership fee. But what if you want to save even more? Well, you can pick up the same order in a store and get a discount. We offer that discount because pickup avoids the most expensive part of shipping, last mile delivery. And so we share those savings with our customers. But what if you want items sooner than two days? What if you need it today? Well, that's where Walmart really has the advantage because we have stores everywhere. Almost 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart. And because of this network, customers can pick up products in a matter of hours. We're even testing same-day delivery from a number of our stores. Talking about stores, Judith, wow. Thank you, Mark. Wow, indeed. You know, because of the hard work of our associates absolutely everywhere, we're delivering strong results for our company, and we're delivering great service for our customers, however they want to shop. All around the world, we're thinking about what's possible and trying out new innovations. You know, in one of our stores in Texas, Tomball, customers are using interactive displays to shop and learn about new technologies like connected home. In Michigan, in Michigan, <laughs> One of our customers can use an automated pickup machine, which is completely self-service, 
You simply walk up to it, scan a barcode, and your delivery comes to you instantly. In Mexico, we've got digital kiosks that allow anybody to place an online order in store, even if they want to pay with cash. And in the UK, we're testing new robotic technologies and automated solutions in our distribution centers. But that's not all. Right across the US, we are using data and analytics to change the way that work gets done in our stores. Routine processes like price changes or stocking the shelves are becoming faster and easier. And new mobile apps and tools, such as information on sales, markdowns, customer feedback, are available at your fingertips without ever having to leave the sales floor. Mark, technology is helping us in so many ways. It's providing convenience for our customers, but it's helping to make sure that the work that our associates does is simpler and more valuable. And most importantly, that gives them time to serve our customers. It definitely does, Judith. Walmart has a strong history of innovation, but the real difference maker has always been our people. Let's look at that map again. We have over 5,000 stores and clubs in the US, and at each store, there are hundreds of associates commuting to work every day. Many of them are driving. That's true. So this has us thinking, doesn't it, Judith? It certainly does. And you know, you write about our associates making the real difference. So what if associates, like Rhonda, for example, wanted to make a stop on their way home, deliver a dot-com order, and earn a little more for doing that? that we wanted to test a little bit more. So we've begun testing associate delivery program in just a few stores that gives our people that option. Associates can download an app mark, receive notifications if there's a customer along their route home that wants a wait, an online order, and then if the associate wants to, they can deliver that order. It's quite simple. Now we've got quite a lot to learn about the idea, but I think it's a great example and one of many innovative ideas that we're looking at that leverages being Walmart. I'm so excited about this, Judith. Just imagine associates all over the world delivering orders to our customers on their way home for work. That could be a real game changer. Good. I feel so fortunate and proud to work with all of you and I'm looking forward to shaping the future of retail together. Thank you so much for making me feel welcome. We are very glad that you're here as well, so thank you. You know, one of the things I love most about Walmart is that we're always thinking about the future. And it is our people, our innovation, and our creativity that make the difference. Thank you. Thank you.
that I have the honor and the privilege to announce the next speaker. First of all, I've already figured out the only thing anybody's going to remember about today is Willie. <laughs> and I'm good with that. Mr. Willie has been delighting his customers for almost 10 years, and we want to show you how he does it. Watch this. My name is Willie, Mr. Willie. All right now. And what I do is when people come in, I uh, what's the word for? I greet them. And I tell them how they're doing, and if they have children, I will ask them how the kids doing, and most of the time they'll come up and they want a band. What's a band? A band? Bam! Bam! Okay. Give me a band. Bam! That's a band. Kids call him the Bam Man. Some people call him Mr. Willie. He has eight kids. One of his daughters, Gwen, is here with him today. Wave, Gwen. Say hi, everybody. Hello, brother. He has 19 grandkids. He's been married for 60 years. To one woman, he says. <laughs> now, what I, what, I, what I didn't know until just like this week is that he was also formerly a preacher, if you couldn't tell. God is good. God is good. And he's a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. Nope, 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 don't go yet. Wait, 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 there's more. There's more. Mr. Willie has been remixed and gone viral. This has been viewed on YouTube more than 1.4 million times. Check this out. My name is Willie. Mr. Willie. Mil Mil Mr. Willie. And what I do is when people come in, I greet them and I tell them how they do it. I will ask them how the kids do Most of the time they'll come up and they want a band. What's a band? Bam! That's a band. What's, what's 
What's the word for it? Bam! What's the word for it? Bam! Thank you, Mr. Willie. Show him your appreciation one more time. I don't know if you could see his feet during that introduction, but they almost left the ground a few times. It scared me. <laughs> good morning, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> Have you had a good week? <laughs> well, congratulations on making your way here. Reach over to your neighbors and give them a bam. What's the word for it? <laughs> bam. Oh, it's got the bam echo. You guys sound like a remix. I really do love that remix because it's got a great beat, but also because it's about one of you, and it has gotten stuck in my head. Good music will do that. Songs are made up of music and the lyrics. They have verses and they tell stories. And the best songs have a chorus you remember. You've got that bam stuck in your head right now, don't you? Now you do. That's the chorus in Willie's song. And together, as a company, we write verses that tell a story. And the thing that connects the verses, the chorus for Walmart, is our people. People like you and people like Willie. It's your beat, the work you do, that brings it all together. And I don't know how you feel, but to me, it feels like we've been writing some pretty good music together these days. Because of you. So here's the verse we've written with our results so far just last year. Customer visits are up, we're bringing prices down, we're managing inventory and in-stock well. Sales were up over $13 billion last year in constant currency, and total revenue reached $486 billion. Earnings per share were higher than we, than we expected coming into the year. $31.5 billion in cash flow gives us the fuel to grow, and we returned $14.5 billion to shareholders. Well done, and thank you. What's the word for it? We're also writing a verse with our service to communities around the world. We're using our strength to help others, to create shared value for our business and for society. Customers have always trusted us for low prices, but they also want to know that the products they buy are good for their families, the people that made them, and the planet. Many of the suppliers that produce these products are women. In 2011, we pledged to source $20 billion from women-owned businesses, and we met that goal last year. That's a big number. And one of those women is Sarah Fry. Sarah, would you please stand up? She's down here in front of me. Sarah's a farmer, and she started... Would your son stand up for a second, too? Hi, guys. Her boys came with her today. She's, she's a farmer and she started selling watermelons to one of our stores in Illinois out of her pickup truck when she was 19 years old. And guess, guess what? Last year, she sold us over five million watermelons. She, she's promised me those didn't all come out of her pickup truck, because that's a big number. When it comes to watermelons and pumpkins, we don't know of a larger grower in the United States, and she's a job creator in seven states. Way to go, Sarah. Congratulations and thank you. Last year, we met another goal that we started in 2011. We supported training in retail, in factories, and on farms for one million women around the world. You belong to a company that is making a difference in people's lives. How do those results feel? What's the word for it? Bam. So we're not stopping there. We recently set new goals to increase the use of renewable energy, to take a gigaton of emissions out of our supply chain, to create zero waste in our operations, and to sell more sustainable products. Here in the U.S., we're really proud that we're on track to achieve a 10-year commitment to source an additional $250 billion in products that support American jobs. Now, our, 
Obviously, we don't do all that by ourselves. Our suppliers work with us on all these efforts related to sustainability and U.S. manufacturing and other things, and I want to ask them to stand up. If you're a supplier to our company today and you're in this arena, would you please get on your feet and let us appreciate you? Thank you for the great products that you sell to us. They're scattered around. I hope that you know we mean that. We appreciate your partnership. Our world is increasingly transparent, and we are out to earn trust. When people shine on a light on Walmart, a light on our decisions, the jobs we create, the activities in our supply chain, we want them to like what they see. So we'll make good choices, not only as it relates to creating shared value, but also when it comes to ethics and compliance. We would rather have a bad financial result than to take a shortcut. We want your children and mine to be proud of the choices you and I make and the things that we do. We have a strong set of values at Walmart, don't we? And the verse that we're writing today is about more than just financial results. We value more than that, right? Now. While our values and those kinds of commitments aren't changing, a lot of other things are. As we often say, the only thing that's constant at Walmart is? Isn't that amazing? Everywhere I go around the world, everybody knows the answer to that question. It's because it's true. And technology is changing what customers expect and how they shop. The next verse in our song is about them, our customers. They are the reason that we have jobs. If we don't get ahead of where they're going, they'll choose to shop somewhere else. So where are they headed? Well, they've always wanted the best prices. They want value for their hard-earned money, and they should. And they want great merchandise, high quality, something new, something that's just flat out awesome. And today, more than ever, customers expect and deserve to save time. Time is a currency like money. They want an easy, enjoyable experience without friction. It has got to be fast. The historic trade-off between price and service doesn't really exist anymore. So we're creating a better shopping experience for customers and a better working experience for ourselves as we strive to serve them. I want to give you an example. Tony Hayes started as an overnight stalker, but now she manages the grocery department in store 622 in Oklahoma City. Tony, would you please stand up? She's right here in front of me. So a few weeks ago, a group of us are in her store, and she showed me how she drives modular accuracy and in stock with a new app we've developed for our mobile devices. With this new app, Tony enjoys her work more, and she's getting her work done faster, which gives her more time to serve customers. She impressed me with her desire to learn and to adopt new tools. There's something I want to say to Tony. What's the word for it? Bam. Nice job. Way to go. Let's talk about some more examples. Sherpa Manaharan is a personalization engineer using machine learning to monitor the weather and make sure we're sending swimsuits to Florida and raincoats to Seattle at the right time. Carlos Kirk is an Internet of Things engineer. He's experimenting with in-store sensors to provide real-time inventory and price changes. Bowen Gong is a data scientist on the Sam's Club technology team. He leads computer vision efforts. He leads computer vision efforts that are aimed at eliminating the checkout process altogether. We're experimenting and we're inventing. We have tests going on with digital endless aisle shopping, automated pickup towers in stores, automated pickup stations in the parking lot, robotics and image analytics to scan aisles for outs, the use of blockchain for food safety, and machine learning in our pricing systems to assist merchants. And we're doing more than just testing. We're scaling things like two-day free shipping with no membership fee on millions of items, a pickup discount when customers want to pick it up, grocery pickup around the world, including a grocery pickup business at Sam's Club. We're piloting the use of stores as shipping locations in China and Japan. And Jet Fresh Delivery is now available to half the U.S. population and growing. We have started to invent the future of shopping again. We are making every day easier for busy families, and we're using new ways of working to do it. You're writing a really great song right now, and it is awesome to hear. What's the word for it? And there'll be more where that came from. 
And as exciting as all that stuff is, I want to be clear that we don't believe technology is the answer to everything. The secret to our success will always be our people. Now, no doubt our work will be different in the future. Robots, drones, algorithms will do some of the work that we used to have to do. And some people are afraid of what those changes will bring. But I don't think we should be. Instead, I think we should recognize that we'll be able to learn, grow, and change together. All of us at Walmart and more broadly in business, education, and government must work together to ensure that this generation and the next are trained and ready with the skills they need to succeed. From the invention of the steam engine to putting a man on the moon to mobile devices, as technology has changed, society has adapted, and our lives have gotten better. But sometimes change can be hard, and we must be prepared to embrace change and learn new ways of living and working. We're all doing that now. It would be hard for me to find anyone in this arena that doesn't have their smartphone within reach. It's now integrated into your life and mine. Well, we see the opportunity to improve our business and help lead this change. Today, together, we're building a new Walmart. As we're reinventing how we serve customers, we're preparing you with the latest tools and training to serve them and grow in your career. Let's all be lifelong learners. You can see the beginning of our work in the academies in the US and the UK and the technology we're placing into your hands. Looking ahead, we'll compete with technology, but we'll win with people. We'll be people-led and tech-empowered. We'll win because we're purpose-driven, with clear and meaningful values and an effective and resilient culture. It will be our humanity that drives our creativity, powers our competitive spirit, and keeps us out in front. Now, we want everyone to be part of this. We embrace diversity in this company, and we are committed to creating inclusive environments in every store and in every part of our business. We have all kinds of jobs, and we want the most talented people in them. You can learn to run a store, be a leader in a distribution center, drive a truck, run a tire center, or lead a customer care center. We're growing jobs in new areas, we have data scientists, machine learning engineers, and mobile app developers, to name a few. More than ever, Walmart will be a ladder of opportunity, a place where you can build your dreams and grow. Now, let me introduce you to a few other people I've come across this year who are doing just that. And I want to start with Amanda Sykes and Susan China. Now, let me warn you, warn you kind of like Willie, these people are a little bit crazy too, but in the best way. I met them um, a while back in the UK. Stand up, guys. They, they work in England. They, they lead our meat and seafood business in their store. And between them, they have 55 years of service. Doesn't look like that's possible. <laughs> And they wanted me to tell you that during their careers that the company has given them flexibility, so not only would they be great colleagues, but they'd also be great moms. They've raised kids over that period of time. And when I was in their store, it kind of went like this. There was a pizza counter, and we were selling a bunch of pizzas, and they were bragging about how much they were doing in volume, and the pizzas looked great. And all of a sudden, I hear these voices <laughs> down, the, down the aisle, and these ladies are like, hey, if you want to see something, come on down here with us, because we got it going on. So I go down there, and their meat and seafood counter is gorgeous. Take a look at it behind us. Now, it looked like that on the day that I was there. And then they laid the big news on me that they had been voted the best meat and seafood counter in the country, not just within ASDA, but the entire UK. I'm proud of you both. You had a good week? Good. So I thought it might be good if they came to the shareholders meeting and I'd like to give them a bam. What's, what's the word for it? Bam, bam. Thank you both for being here. Our customers love it when we have personality. When you talk to them, have a conversation with them when you're walking to an item. They've got customers who keep coming back because they love them. That's what we're all out to do. That's the way that we're going to win. Now, I mentioned earlier that customers are looking for great merchandise. Raise your hand if you're a merchant. Right now, everyone's hand should be up. 
Let me introduce you to another merchant. This is Ricardo Costa. Ricardo, come up here, stand by me. So Ricardo is the store manager in our Heartland store in Toronto. He started 19 years ago in Lawn and Garden. Now he runs a store. And he's done such a good job of being an item merchant that he's earned what they call maverick status in Canada. That word sounds familiar, doesn't it? And he reminded me of Sam Walton because he was grabbing me by the arm and running me from one place to the other. And he'd go to a side counter and he would say, now let me remind you, he's a maverick, so he gets to make more choices about what he features. He's earned some freedom. So he's dragging me to a side counter item and he's saying, I know we can sell more of this. And he's bringing it out, building a big feature and sales are going up by multiples. And he was just doing it over and over again in his store. He's a merchant. We all need to be merchants like Ricardo. Um, by the way, I heard that you recently applied for a promotion to lead more stores in your market, and I just want to let you know that you've got that job. Awesome. Congratulations. Way to go, man. All right. Go get them. So now your job is to spread that, right, to all the stores you're responsible for. Way to go. Congratulations. Thank you. We all need to be merchants like Ricardo, every single one of us. So folks, it's pretty simple. This is our moment. Our plan to win is clear. And it'll be you that will make the difference. But it's always been that way. Our people make the difference. Have you heard that before? Yes. It's your beat. You form the chorus of our song. It'll be people like you that make it happen. People like Tony, put your phone down for a second. Bam. And Ricardo. Bam. Susan and Amanda. Bam. And Mr. Willie. Bam. Bam. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Jeff Gerhardt. Hey, y'all. Okay, so at this time, I can now inform you that the uh, polls have closed. If you filled out a ballot and have not handed it in, please pass it to an usher now. We will now announce the unofficial preliminary voting results from today's meeting. Proposal number one, election of directors. All 11 director nominees were elected. <laughs> Proposal number two, a non-binding advisory resolution to establish the frequency of say on pay votes. For this proposal, the majority of the shares present and eligible to vote were voted in favor of holding our say on pay vote annually. Proposal number three, a non-binding advisory resolution to approve the compensation of Walmart's named executive officers. This the proposal was approved by a majority vote. And proposal number four, the, elect, the selection of Ernst & Young as independent accountants. This proposal was also approved by a majority vote. Proposals five, seven, and eight did not receive the required votes, and therefore each of them failed. No presenter was made available today to present proposal number six. We will issue an announcement later today with the approximate voting percentages for each of these proposals. The official results for each of the proposals will be disclosed in a filing next week with the Securities and Exchange Commission. The business portion of this, our meeting is now adjourned. And let me please welcome back to the stage our chairman, Greg Penner. Thanks. That was a fun morning, wasn't it? Doug, I just want to let you know that uh, next year I've got dibs on Mr. Willie to introduce me. <laughs> I want to close the meeting by saying thank you to all of our shareholders for your support of our company. Today I hope you've seen why your board believes we are so well positioned to once again deliver the future of retail. I'd also like to again appreciate each of our 6,000 associates here today. Please share with your fellow associates at home how grateful we are for everything they do to make the difference every day. You all are truly amazing. And that, more than anything, is what has been on display here today. 
This adjourns the official business portion of Walmart's 47th annual shareholders meeting.